And we're now getting our first look at the suspects in custody. The Secretary of Security and Citizen Protection of Mexico releasing this photo. The two are among the most wanted. Very big deal. Federal authorities have wanted to nab these two men for years. El Mayo was one of the DEA's most wanted. Okay, in a uh, kind of shocking and strange twist of events, one of the most wanted men in the world, the most wanted uh, trafficker, Ismael Almayo Zambada, was delivered to the United States. They landed in El Paso. He was on a plane. He flew into the country of his own free will, sort of, because the story, at least, that the DEA, the U.S. federal government's releasing, is that his co-passenger on the flight, Joaquin Guzman Lopez, which is Chapo's son, they were the two passengers, and that Chapo's son tricked El Mayo into getting onto the plane. They were supposed to be going to look at property they were going to buy together, I guess, in northern Mexico, and instead they kept going and they landed in El Paso, and the feds took him into custody. So this is pretty, pretty shocking. I don't know what to say, but I guess I shouldn't be shocked by what these, um, these narcos from south of the border do to each other. El Mayo's son, of course, Vicente, was one of the key witnesses in Chapo's trial. So now Chapo's son, I mean, is he getting back at El Mayo? This is, wow. So uh, Chapo's son, of course, his brother of video was taken into custody a few months ago. And um, he's one of the Chapitos, one of the guys that, one of the four sons of Chapo that took over the business. And he's been in custody for some months. What sort of, I mean, clearly some deal has been worked. But this shows the craziness of building your whole criminal justice policy or strategy, I should say, around informants. I mean, so... So, so Chapel was public enemy number one. You got him. You gave him life. Uh, and, of course, he was sort of pre fetty wop as we say on the Internet. So Chapel goes away. He supposedly was the architect of all of America's dope problems. But things just got worse, of course, as we know. ODs have skyrocketed, etc. And... Um, as last intelligence reports were that Mayo and Chapel's sons were sort of beefing over territory, but maybe that was just their underlings and that obviously they maintained a relationship on a higher level or maybe this was, who knows, maybe this was presented as a peace offering. Hey, let's chip in on some property. And in fact, he delivered, Chapo's son delivered El Mayo to the U.S. federal government in El Paso. Wow. Never saw this one coming. Everyone thought El Mayo was hiding out in the mountains, like El Mencho was presumed to be doing. But it shows you the comfort level that these guys actually have down in Mexico. Chapo, of course, wasn't really in hiding. He would pop into Culiacan and other cities and uh, his men would go around and take everyone's cell phone in a restaurant but then he would say you're the guest of Mr. Guzman today and he'd pay for everybody's meal and he would he would eat out and uh, of course famously he met up with Sean Penn to give an interview and that's how they caught him the last time and uh I don't, I'm kind of at a loss. Pretty pretty shocking. So there's a $15 million bounty on El Mayo, and there's a $5 million bounty on Mr. Guzman. Now, does Guzman get both the bounties? Now, of course, I'm repeating the story the federal government released, 
Is that what really happened? Uh, they, like anybody powerful should want to do, is control the narrative. So that's the story they've released. Is that really what went what went on? Sounds plausible. I mean, he wasn't um, taken into custody in Mexico, even though he clearly was comfortable getting on planes. Shows you how much the Mexican government was looking for him. Uh, Mexico seems to have become just a total, well, not a total, but outside of Mexico City, a narco state. But El Mayo used to be part of the Juarez cartel, Lord of the Skies, Amado Carrillo Fuentes, who supposedly died during plastic surgery. Who knows if that's even true. When he died or retired and went into hiding, whatever happened, he, El Mayo, allied himself with the Sinaloa Federation. And, of course, he and El Chapo were, I don't know, there's not really a hierarchy between these guys. Like, U.S. federal government or prosecutors tend to describe any criminal conspiracy in the sort of like a version of the Italian mafia where there's these strict hierarchies. So whether you're talking about some guys selling dope on the street in Detroit or the Mexicans south of the border, they always describe it in this mafia-like way where there's all oh, this, this group is under this capo and he, this is the boss. But really it's just a lot of guys, <coughs> excuse me, who work together now and each of them are very powerful and each have their own enforcement wings and sometimes their enforcement wings and get into it with each other but one El Chapo son's taken into custody uh, late last year or last fall in a daring raid and delivered immediately to the U.S. of course there was lots of violence associated with that uh, but he's in U.S. custody and so now his brother has delivered El Mayo. I wonder what sort of sweet deal they've cut. He didn't do that for nothing. Remember El Chapo's wife, Emma Cornell, she unexpectedly landed in Washington, D.C. a few years back, went to court, got herself a deal, where, I mean, I don't know, she did less than two years, I think. And she got out. Her and her lawyer and some other people went to a nightclub in L.A. Hacerlo en Los Ángeles en el día de la independencia de México era una de sus metas, algo que Emma sabía y la razón que le hizo salir en público. Sobre todo en... And we're making it rain and having drinks. Ah, uh, we're kind of in a bizarro world. I mean, this truly now is the age of the gangsters, even more than the 1920s. And they are now using the U.S. federal government as a tool in their own internal power struggle. So one of Chapo's sons showed up and landed in El Paso on a plane and had Ismael Zambada considered to be, maybe along with El Mencho, the most powerful guys in the underworld in Mexico, Everybody thought Zambada, he's 78 years old, everybody thought he was gone. He was in hiding. Well, not so much in hiding, but that he was just, you know, in some mountainous area where they weren't going to get him. Boy, it'll be interesting to find out, though, what comes out may not be the truth, but it'll be interesting to at least hear the storylines of uh, what went on behind the scenes Zambada's own son is still in witness protection. He should have completed, I think he got like 11 years uh, for his uh, testimony against Mr. Guzman Sr. back in, what 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 year was that trial? 2018? And he was think, taken into custody in about 2014. He's got to be out, but he's in witness protection. Don't know where he is. Now his son, or now his 78-year-old father's in custody. But of course, as we've seen, they've been taking out top level people from Mexico. You know, Chapo, many, many, many others get killed, put in prison, 
and just more and more and more substances continue to flow over the border into the U.S. It's not slowing anything down. Uh, global coca production is at an all-time high. Doesn't mean it's all coming to the U.S. Uh, Europe has become the number one market now, but an increasing number of countries are, shall we say, compromised by the dope business. Um, Ecuador has become a country very much under pressure by large-scale narcos. Sinaloa is still the top dog, though Jalisco New Generation is extremely influential and powerful in other areas as well. Jalisco New Generation specifically makes a show of having almost like a, a paramilitary. They have like things that look like tanks. They produce videos where they have hundreds of guys dressed in CJNJ, CJNG gear, marching around, impacting the elections. What are the long-term plans of these guys? Hard to say, perhaps Zambada was seen as representing the old way of doing things by his own allies within the operation uh, and, a, and a new method where the narcos are more integrated into the mainstream economy. For example, uh, elements of the Sinaloa group are said to have created a total vertical monopoly of the fishing industry in Mexico. So you catch fish, you're, some, you're paying some fee to them. You buy fish at the dock and process it into, you know, I don't know, whatever, uh, clam chowder or something. You're paying, if you own a seafood restaurant, you're paying. So the fishing industry, totally vertically integrated by Sinaloa. If if you can remember this, for those of you that have been grocery shopping for a long time, remember maybe 10, 12 years ago, you catch avocados sometimes for less than a dollar. Avocados now are often two or three dollars. Well, a lot of that is a tax. It's due to a to, a portion of their price is going to criminal groups in Mexico. They have a stranglehold in a lot of areas on lime and avocado. Well, they don't grow it, but they make the people that grow it pay a fee. So they're really sinking their teeth into the whole Mexican economy. And Mexico is a not really a third world country. It has areas, parts of it are like a third world country, but of course, it, uh, on and off, it has had the world's richest man, Carlos Slim, who's of Lebanese descent. But of course, just so you know, the way the Mexican economy works, his business and many of the business models of the richest people in Mexico would not be legal in the United States. It would violate antitrust laws. Uh, <laughs> when if you drive from San Diego into Tijuana, you know, in your and as soon as you go over, your phone says, you know, you're now, you're now in Mexico or whatever. New phone rates apply, and the phone rates become astronomical compared to U.S. phone rates. And that's where he makes a lot of his money as a government government grant, or he did for almost total control in the telecom industry. No wonder he's so wealthy, and it seems to be the kind of deals the government is cutting with the guy, people from the underworld in Mexico. And the more I'm talking through this, I'm thinking maybe Zambada was too old school. His time was over. He was 78 years old. Maybe, you know, I, I would imagine they, I mean, they're in it for the money. They would probably prefer if they can to make their money off extorting. Like the Italian mafia, the smart ones moved into different things here. Many legal, if you didn't know, many legal businesses around the country were started with organized crime, seed money. Several restaurant trains right here in Metro Detroit that shall remain nameless. The land that one of Detroit's casinos sits on is leased 
from a guy linked to the Detroit Mafia. So, uh, but would you rather make money off extorting avocado and lime and fish and not really be a topic of a lot of uh, law enforcement attention? Or would you rather send crystal and fetty over the border and subject yourself to huge prison time in the U.S. Well, I mean, unless you're a crazy person, you'd rather make uh, money with less risk. M maybe in the, in the Chapel Sons, uh, specifically, they've been heavily involved in trying to take over the retail distribution of high-end reefers there in Mexico. Dispensaries. So Chapel Sun are big in the dispensary business. And Mexico in the last 10 years has become a big consumer of what they used to just send over to us. Uh, Crystal, very popular, I guess, in Tijuana. It's 50 cents. You get a capsule of it. Um, but yeah, Chapel Sons would probably rather move into, if they can grow high grade Kush and sell it, might as well do that instead of the other stuff. Not saying the other things are going to stop, but this is pretty interesting. There must be a lot of Games of Thrones type of thing going on behind the scenes, but Chapel Sun got El Mayo, his father's supposed one time equal. To get on a plane and they landed in El Paso and now it'll be interesting interesting to see what goes on with a video Guzman the son that was already in custody will he get a sweet deal with this new brother will they get sweet deals like Chapo's wife maybe so I wouldn't be surprised if the US government and I'm not, I don't think this is a bad thing. The U.S. government's job is to stop the U.S. population from being harmed. Perhaps the idea will be control who's in power down there in Mexico. Let them do what they do in exchange for them turning down the production of Fetty specifically, but also Crystal, because those account for so many overdose deaths. In the United States, I wonder if those type of conversations are being had. You know, we'll not we'll let you serve short prison terms and go back and be in power. And in exchange, we want to see less production, much less production of these very hard drugs, and less of them sent to the U.S., which should be the U.S. government's goal. Putting people in prison should just be a means to the end of harm reduction amongst the U.S. population, we shall see. So El Mayo is in custody, brought there by Chapel's son. Wow, what a deal that was cut. So look for some interesting, interesting things. El Mayo has many indictments sitting on him, quite a few of them out of the city of Chicago, but probably any city could indict him. Um, New York got to try Chapel last time. I would imagine the Chicago prosecutors would like their chance at Zimbabwe, and he's already listed in the Bureau of Prisons. I mean, his name is in there. It says BOP not in custody, but he's already in the system. So El Mayo has been brought to the United States and delivered to the U.S. government. I want a Chapel's sons.